We're here uh, interviewing Judge Robert Matthews, senior judge in the Court of Common Pleas in the First Judicial District of Pennsylvania. That's Thank right. you for coming, Judge. You're welcome. Thanks it's for important. having me. It's important uh, to us and to everybody, and the public especially, to know about the experience that we have on the bench. Uh, would you mind going over uh, some of your background? We just started talking about I was that. born in a poor neighborhood in a nice town. Pennsylvania. My dad had nine brothers and one sister. Mom had four siblings. I, among those, was the first ever to go past college. Huh. Uh, I actually had parents that uh, dad had a small business in Logan, and I had to earn my own way to high school. I went to LaSalle College High School, wow. and parents made me pay my own tuition by working it off. They would yeah. give me the money, and I'd give it right back to them. Uh, <laughs> Uh, they, uh, I think things were different. I went to graduated to LaSalle High in '55, the LaSalle University, now University, in '59. Uh, the hiatus. I was in ROTC in uh, college, but uh, uh, since the Vietnam War was coming up, they refused to grant me a, um, an exemption, so I had to go directly in the military in, in Oklahoma. Oh, see, I didn't know that. Yeah, uh, and. Uh, I enjoyed it, but I was supposed to start in the fall of 59 at uh, Villanova. Uh, we were married in 57, uh, had a child in 50, December 58. So by the time I got out of the military, it was uh, not possible to afford law school, so I worked right. about eight or nine years, huh. and I was eventually accepted to Tempo uh, Day School, yeah. but in order to work, they uh, allowed me to have some evening courses, so I graduated oh. on time in 71, yeah. so I spent three years there. Well, that's a remarkable accomplishment in itself, I think. I, I credit my wife. Uh -huh. uh, we did have an agreement that uh, she would not work until the children were of school age, so the kids went to school, yeah. and she went back to work about when they were eight, which is correspondent to the time I went to law school. And how many children do you have? I have two children, uh, three grandchildren. One is married. She's the one who has the grandchildren. Wow. Um, proud that my uh, oldest grandson is 23, is the beat writer for the Flyers huh? in the Philadelphia Daily News. Uh, okay. The other one is a senior in uh, Penn State. They just wished him well. He's leaving Monday for the, the, the big uh, return to the hockey team. And, uh, oh. Penn State, and I have an eight-year-old granddaughter. Well, that's great. Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. Um, has the practice of law changed a lot since you started? Tremendously, in, in my opinion. Uh, funny that you ask, Glenn. I know we have a short interview, but, you know, I really didn't want to do matrimonial work and didn't want to do uh, criminal work, and most of my career was uh, spent in matrimonial <laughs> and in criminal. I've been a family court judge since uh, uh, Governor Ridge appointed me in uh, 1998. Uh, and uh, I am a family court judge by choice. I, I have had uh, offers to go to civil and criminal and not to not the too distant past, but I said, no, I'd rather stay there. Uh, it's an important area of the law. I, 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 I don't know what other judges are being interviewed, but I would say that it is probably the most difficult. You know, you spent some time at 1801. That's true. And we've met over the years. That's why I asked before we went on camera how many years you've been around. I actually started in 71. Oh. No, January 1st to 72 with Judge George Ivins. Um, then I clerked for Judge Meade and then Judge Nicholas Cipriani. So. Before I took the bench, I had 21 and a half years of law clerking. Wow. And now I have December 1st, I'll begin my 15th year as a, a judge presiding. Mm -hmm. um, it is much more difficult than most people believe. Um, and it, it in, in my view, is uh, so important because uh, we, we are shaping the future. Uh, right. People. Right. have actually said to me, uh, you know, how does it feel to have so much power? And in the beginning, I said I didn't. Mm. I, I didn't feel that I had any power. On the other hand, I now know that I've affected the lives of uh, 
I probably tried about 34,000 cases in those years. Wow. Uh, 84, 8,600 dependency, mm -hmm. and mostly custody of divorce cases. And so, uh, yeah, your decisions in, the, in that court especially affect a lot of people they, and they, the future. They, yeah, the lender, the kind that don't make the press, but thank God for that. I don't, yeah. I, we don't do it for the press. We right. don't do it for, for the prestige. But we do it to affect the economy, the families, the future, how the children uh, uh, react. I have great stories. Uh, I'm just thinking now that I'm sitting here with my robe on. Yeah. I yeah. had my choice of put the robe on or off, but a five-year-old boy, I couldn't get him to talk in a private interview. And I said, well, well, at least tell me why you're not speaking. And he said, well, I don't talk to men that wear black dresses. <laughs> yeah. So the, the the real serious decisions that you have to make throughout the day are brightened sometimes by the beauty of the, the charm of the children. Um, how come you didn't ask me about how beautiful I am? Because everybody tells me I'm beautiful except you. You know. Yeah. So you have to be on your toes when you're dealing with children. But uh, it it comes back after a year. After a while, you know you. you like moments like this, sit down and remember the things mm -hmm. that you did, the things that may be made, a slight difference in the way the child yeah. uh, makes it all worth it. And if we pay attention then, uh, maybe won't have too much to do on the back end. Yeah, I, I think most adult. family court judges are aware of the fact that the way we handle children, we can avoid what in, in our profession is called pre-delinquency. Yeah. Uh, to put them on the right path. Mm -hmm. uh, I, my preference is to settle cases, especially for custody and uh, divorce cases. Yeah. Which and support cases are a little bit harder in that, you know, I'm not giving her that much money or, you know, he's uh, not right. giving me enough. Or she's working, why should I pay her? And those kind of things. You just handle on a case by case basis, but the custody are the most difficult, uh, in, in my view. Oh, and the divorce cases, most people don't understand that. And I am a fellow of the American Academy of Matrimonial Lawyers for since '84, '94, '04. It'll be close to 30 years, yeah. but they're the kind of cases you have to have knowledge of. Uh, bankruptcy, stock options, and many, many other areas. Of yeah, you wouldn't have thought of it, which I mean, the common person. No, the normal. common person wouldn't think of that. No, no not at all. So I feel like I'm leading the interview. Like, well, that's fine. I mean, the, the, you're the person that's being interviewed. So, I mean, you mentioned the, uh, the academy. Now, I, w I wonder if there are any other particular uh, things that you're especially proud of that uh, I'm proud of my family. Yeah. I'm proud of the fact that I married 54 years. Bingo. And Sunday you. was my daughter's 28th anniversary of marriage. That, that in itself <laughs> yeah. ought to go down on the, on the camera as a record uh, I think so. in, in this day and age. <laughs> um, but I'm, I'm thankful that I have a wonderful family. They're, uh, my son's an attorney. Mm. My daughter uh, has various business interests. and. Uh, my grandchildren are well developed and uh, well educated, and that's that's all you can count on in this life is to do the best of what the good Lord has given you, believe me, and move on from there and You're utilize blessed. it for the benefit of other people. I agree. I agree with you. Um, have there been uh, any uh, particular cases that? you think might be especially interesting or uh, I know that some of the a lot of the juvenile matters are, are you mean as a judge or yeah. in private practice well well either really well yeah I had uh, I had about three or four cases that I represented uh, uh, criminal defendants in uh, first-degree murder charges that were actually innocent. Really? Uh, some of my friends in the district attorney's office, <laughs> even in uh, 2011, will disagree with me, uh, but uh, age has, has, has shown that. Yeah. Um, 
Yes, I have uh, prosecuted uh, 1983 action, which in the lay parlance means uh, that I've uh, successfully litigated civil rights cases where people were beaten and then, you know, the bad times and uh, uh, Back they in come the up 60s, with cases. Yeah. No, that was in the 70s and 80s. Oh, okay. um, a beautiful thing that I, I did very deep. About two weeks before I ceased presiding in dependency cases on a regular basis, you do occasionally. Uh, yeah. I had a strange thing that I did. I asked children to uh, read books. Um, and in, in reading books, I had an attorney challenge me one day, and huh. he actually, in, 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 in a lawyer like fashion, screamed at me, you know, that he's going to appeal me because uh, <laughs> I would give. Uh, but since we had to review dependency cases every six months, it came yes. back about five, five and a half, as you well know. But I would give the children five books to read, and uh, uh, many were African American, so I would have my staff give me the names of books that they felt, uh, the African Americans especially, that would benefit children. And this attorney stood up and challenged me and said, you know, you can't do that. This is not a criminal court. And I said to him, oh, please, I beg you, appeal me. And he yeah. said, why? I said, well, I want to write the brief, you know. Judge criticized for making children read books. <laughs> and I said uh, to him, the image is Mr. Not S., if that goes down in history, you will have made my life. Because, yes. uh, and I'm leading to a point, Len, because Two weeks before I was to come over to the domestic relations uh, branch in 2000, uh, they asked me, and I re I'll just say his first name, but the court officer said, Your Honor, Andre wants to speak to you. And I said, okay. And of course, children can speak, and Andre said, Debbie, I want you to know that I hate you. Mm -hmm. And I said, okay, win some, lose some. You know, yeah. I mean, that's, that's the way it goes, Andre. You won't be the first or the last. And then I asked him why. And he said, well, you made me read five books. And I had to do a report. I said, I know I have them right here. I held them up. Mm -hmm. I said, they were very good. Mm -hmm. And he said, but I really don't hate you anymore. And I said, that's nice. Now yeah. why? He said, because when I read the books, I realized what you were doing, huh? and you were the only person that ever personally cared for me. Yeah, how about that? And I said, well, Andre, you have to come back in another five months. He said, well, I know that. I said, but you don't know the bad part. He said, well, I said now you have ten books to read. <laughs> and he said to me, I will do it with great honor. And as a man, that I wanted to get off the bench yeah. and give the kid a hug. Right. We're not allowed to do that. Yeah. I did get off the bench. I did go down in the presence of the court. I made it part of the record and I shook his hand. Yeah. But I must tell you, I yeah. was reduced to tears. And if anything, that that case stands out high and above every other oh, bad. because it, it showed me that I could make a difference, make a difference. in a child's life. Yeah. And that's, what, what more reward can you ask? No, yeah. that's huge. Mm. To me it is, I, would, I don't know. So. Anybody who may someday be listening to this might not think it, but I do. Well, I admire you and I appreciate the fact. Well, I did not say that uh, to get that, that admiration from anybody. I just I said it for the purposes of letting other people know that there are rewards you get from being a judge. <laughs> There's yeah. a lot of downsides too, but well, uh, you know, when, when people criticize you for doing the best you can, and I see so many of my colleagues wind up making the right decision, but people just disagree. Yeah, well, you know, that's going to happen oh, any time. Yeah. Right? I see 50 percent of the people yeah. dislike me because they lost, so that's what we have to, we have to get there. Right, right. Um, and, and on that, suppose somebody were becoming a judge, somebody new to the bench, do you have anything that you might be able to, do, you know? recommend to them or any advice to... What, what are we going to be doing with this video? I mean, it, it depends. It'll be on the, uh, on the web. It'll be out on the internet. Well, 
I, I guess it applies to judge. I can, judges, I can say it applies to me personally. Mm -hmm. But we always have to be careful of what you say. Yeah. Well, no matter where you are, whether I'm on video, uh, every day, every word I say is being uh, uh, recorded. Right. Um, I know I've been teased by a few of my appellate brethren when I come up and say, try to explain the I should tell you something that you might not know. Ninety percent of our litigants in the domestic relations branch yeah. are, are pro se. They they are not lawyers. Okay. In custody cases, and it's very very difficult to do, and very very difficult to handle. And uh, because people are representing themselves. Right. So they say, well, I have this whole book, and I want you to look at all these pictures, and I want you. And I say, well, I can't do that. And they ask me why, and I said, well. It's like me trying to forget the pink elephant that I never could forget about that they told me to forget about in law school. Yeah. Because once you tell me about the pink elephant, I'm going to be <laughs> continually thinking about the pink elephant. And a couple of uh, my appellate brethren uh, in, in, in good fun, yeah. you know, taking a couple shots at me in one yeah. case said that uh, uh, Judge Matthews was right in referring and refusing to discuss the pink elephant because it was not relevant to the yeah. case. Okay. Um, so, uh, they're, they're the kind of things that, that stay in your mind, yeah. that you remember. Uh, and getting back to remembering every word you say, I'm going to give you a visual in a moment. I've been asked to discuss with, uh, and I do, lecture to the new judges. And I remember interviewing a child one day, and I said, are you afraid? <clears throat> yes. Are you scared? Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, why are you scared? And I said, well, look, I'll just open my, I'll, I'll unzipper my robe to show you that I'm just a man. I'm a daddy and I'm a papa. Yeah. Well, excuse me, Lynn, read that back in a written form, mm -hmm. not in the visual form. Yeah. So what I was actually doing was saying, I'm opening my robe. Yeah. Pulling down my zipper, yeah. but as a man, that might not mean the same thing if you read it in writing. Uh -huh. What zipper? I where you say? Yeah. So we always have to could be very cautious. Yeah. Of course, it could be misconstrued. Now I always say, look at the beautiful tie my wife bought me. I'm opening my <laughs> shirt. You see that? And then I'm, I'm doing it in thing. a different way. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I guess the other thing. Uh, we have, and I'll credit the first judicial district, and I was on the education committee for years, mm -hmm. uh, probably among any jurisdiction that I know of, the finest judicial education committee and program of any judicial district anywhere in the United States of America. And we had a fabulous program here. They were about two and a half hours in length for six or eight weeks. Oh, yeah. Uh, about religion and how it affects the courts. Huh. And I learned a lot uh, because we discussed Judaism, Catholicism, Protestantism. Uh, the Asian religions were grouped together. Um, uh, the uh, uh, Mormonism, uh, the Latter-day Saints. Um, and the thing that stuck with me is in discussing the Asian religions yeah. in general that they were more of a philosophy and that it taught me to understand that if I had a person of a, a wow. different persuasion, a different country, uh, the one that stuck in my mind, a woman was agreeing with me and I could sense that she didn't want to agree with me but she was agreeing with me. Yeah. And I learned through our own judicial education courses uh, that in her country it was inappropriate and her I see. religious philosophical beliefs was not able to disagree with a person in the authority and of course to rule to her represented authority. Right. And the next time they came back and I said if I gave you your choice what would you do? And it was a completely different answer. Oh, okay. So it directly affects through your education while a judge how you do things yeah. and how you handle things. It's a good workaround there, though. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So I really am very proud to be 
part of the judicial system yeah. and our educational portion of the judicial system. Well, and I know there are a lot of courses that were offered during the, in the uh, judicial education program. And we don't, judges don't have a mandatory mm. uh, amount of time mm. uh, to, um, in, in other words, the lawyers might have 12 to 18 hours, we don't have it, but uh, while an active judge, and I have less time now to do it, but I was spending 100 to 120 hours uh -huh. of education well, per great. year, where the average lawyer might have 12 to 14. Yeah. I thought it was necessary to be up on everything. Well, I, I think that's a great thing. I commend you for it. Is there uh, anything else that you might want to share with us today? I'm proud to be a member of the First Judicial District of Pennsylvania. I'm proud to represent the, the citizens of the, uh, Pennsylvania. Uh, I happen to be, and it might be funny to people, a Republican by party registration, but no less interested as my Democratic uh, brethren and, and sisters uh, on the bench. Uh, but to get elected as a Republican is very difficult. In and I this feel kind of, particularly yeah. blessed in this, in this town. And I would sincerely hope that people viewing this would understand that, that you are voting for a person of integrity, and I don't mean it in a braggadocious sense, but uh, analyze the people. We don't know judges. Who the heck is Joe Blood, <laughs> right. John Jones, yeah. and Tom Smith, and if I missed any of my uh, brothers and sisters on the bench, I didn't mean it that way, but uh, yeah. that's what you really have to do. You don't complain after the, the cows are on the way that I should have elected that person but be proud of what you're doing and do some research and I am feel greatly blessed by my background uh, the judges that have taught me the education in law school and the fact that I am a member of the bench well thank you very much judge Robert Matthews thank you everybody calls me Bob or worse mm -hmm.